strong, look good coming in here today. Everything seen, are all smiles on their faces, I should say. And Cloud9 looking to keep that number one spot alive. The question is, can anybody stop them right now? We get to find out each week, and we're going to find it as we head into the riff right now. Hashtag C9, hashtag C9 win. Hashtag TL win. We're starting off good today. Yes, we, we are. We have this First Aaliyah match, so. in North America. That's true. For this year. There you go. <laughs> It's always uh, like the slow qualifier that comes uh -huh. up. Oh. Add, uh -huh. add on more and more qualifiers, <laughs> and you're good to go. Covered uh, Covered Reddit. For this game, I am definitely excited for this Ray matchup in the top lane, though. Uh, because Just because so much of the info coming out of these guys' scrims and you know, just even the player sentiment, they're like, yeah, we're super excited to have Ray on the team. You know, he's really mechanically gifted. and He's super excited to be playing and show what he's done. Exactly. We were like, yeah, we, they think he has a very high skill cap. Um, so now I'm excited to see what he will do on actually uh, Jace, because Jace is one of those champions where you got to keep up that bullying, you want to keep the tower pressure going, especially when you have an Ivern on the team. Uh, basically, the, the strategy here for these Jace Ivern teams is Jace early pressure on the turret, and once he, they finally wear that down, you get to that mid game where um, the Ivern does hit level six and has Daisy, and then you just rotate around, siege up a bunch of turrets, the, the bush spam, plus all this poke that comes out, um, and the, the early gold lead that Jace should have. Uh, really are used to snowball through the mid game. Um, and they have really set up a very nice mid game snowballing comp here for Cloud9. Uh, we're going to have to see if Team Liquid can put a stop to that because they actually do have a couple of really good mid game breakpoints as well, uh, given that the Rumble can really destroy a backline if, uh, if there's any sort of lockdown on them. Well, we did see Ray in his first play, it was against Someday. Did quite well in lane, only a mm -hmm. few CS behind, maybe falling 10 or so throughout the laning phase. But that 10 allowed Someday, also a very smart player, to get those first teleports, get those first moves. So definitely seeing if Ray can stay on top of that lane, be the first to make the moves. And meanwhile, Lorlo, uh, the guy the, that everyone talks about, oh yeah, he's, he wants to play carries so often. Yeah. You know, he's been a carry player for so, such a long time, and he's been designated to play tanks for these guys, and he's been actually doing quite well on tanks. Now he gets his chance, you know, to take the rumble, uh, to be able to make the big plays and and have those impressive rumble ultimates that do uh, zone off the back line or even take them down. So definitely both of these top laners looking looking like they have a lot to prove. Meanwhile, the junglers as well. Uh, both these guys have actually stabilized pretty well. I always like to track the early early Ivern routes and the options that you have because so many people go for the kind of guaranteed. Uh, buff steel, but it's been so much more in pro play where they start safer side, uh, just prep your two and then go to your own blue rather than uh, going into one of those blind uh, setups where they try and counter you mm -hmm. and grab that first blood super quick. So Contracts has done just that. You prep two camps on your red quadrant, go over and smite your blue real quick so you get that quick spike to level three. And now he's actually going to look to keep track of rain over here, heading down to the bottom side, prepping the scuttle crab. All right, we're gonna actually toss to Jazz. Spoke with Reaper a minute ago about picks and bans. And how's C9's feeling? Riven, yes, I did speak with Reaper, but first up, I had to ask him about Ray and why we're seeing him over Impact. Reaper told me that last time Ray had a poor showing on stage, his scrims actually took a dip. But since he's been improving in scrims, they wanted to give him another chance on stage. And then that kind of wild pick and ban phase, Reaper said that he didn't expect Rainover to pick Graves over Kazix. And they actually were hoping they had Kazix, so he's thinking they might have something oh, planned with that. Action, and though. the Dijalia was an interesting pick as well. Let's send it back to you, though. Boom, yeah. just in time, we get the play back, and Cloud9 gets it as well. Speak of that rain over Graves pick, he comes in here, and they Ooh. get two kills right off the bat. Usually a farming jungler, uh, but he comes right down at the perfect time. The two extended members here, and cleaned up. Sneaky doesn't even have time to use his flash there. Uh, goes down, and that is a huge amount of momentum for this bottom lane. This bottom lane for See Team Liquid has actually been... Uh, you know, disappointing for them so far, but look at this. They are bullying. Smoothie and Sneaky are actually just in the middle of the map here, but move right up on him. Sneaky gets exhausted for the four shot, so the exhaust was on there. No chance. He was dead, even if he had flash. So good, good actually for him to hold onto it there. But man, that is that is a big swing for this bottom lane because yeah. the Varus Nami already were set up to have uh, success down there, and with the early gank. Most of the summoners blown and a lot of extra gold here as Piglet did get kill credit for one of them and off to the early lethality. Rainover looking much more confident here in the early game. Start to change those average behind numbers at 10. 
Two to zero, four and a half hand contracts needs to make something work now. He'll try to find that opening in top lane. He gives Lorlo a chance, but the flash out, it's gonna give him just enough safety. Good dodges. So the reason they hesitated there um, is because it's very dangerous to face check into Fog of War against the Graves. Because uh, Graves has so much line damage here. And they actually eventually, even though they decide Ooh. to... Uh, well, we got to run from Rise. Maybe contracts. Yeah, gonna have to flash. Um, that bush, you're a little bit scared to be face checking into a grave. So yeah. since rain over, uh, just also got one of the kills down bottom. So that's why they kind of hesitated, but mm -hmm. then they made the call to keep up the chase and eventually did run into the jungler. A lot of what we see happening for Liquid is kind of rolling for Cloud9 here, coming away just without the kill. Team Liquid able to pull that back in their favor. So let's we'll see if they can keep this bit of a lead that they have. Maybe getting Cloud9 a little shook here in the early game. And it has to be now. Cloud9 has 100% snowball stats if they're in the lead at 10 minutes. So you cannot be behind. Yeah, they it, will always win. They have definitely been snowballing a lot of games. The only two games they did lose, they were already behind at 10 minutes and stayed behind yep. the entire game. Um, and this is one of those games. Team Liquid are out <laughs> to a pretty early lead. We'll see if they hold on to it for that long. But Golden Glue in the mid lane actually gets Gets the worst end of that trade, but uh, should be able to recall just fine here as he had the wave shoved up anyways. Uh, but yeah, I mean, tracking this uh, this Rainover pick, and Jet talked about uh, Reaper actually wasn't expecting it, even though Rainover right. has been playing quite a lot of graves in solo queue. You know, and some people have been uh, tracking that. He's actually uh, had a, quite a good amount of success, and I do like it for him. Very good at farming, can stay very high health, uh, and really has a lot of options. I like these junglers that don't take a lot of damage while they're clearing for Rainover because Rainover is one of his biggest strengths has been uh, the manipulation yeah. of his uh, and his opponent's jungle route in order to uh, really react very quickly to the current state of the game. And he already showed that in his move down bottom. We'll see what else he does have in store. I, we very much do expect him to go with the lethality build for Graves uh, and be a very big source of DPS towards team fights as well. Um, but we also did prep that this, uh, this is fa uh, a fairly light on CC team, as they're going to have to rely on Piglet and Matt landing skill shots um, or Golden Blue really setting those up with yeah. one targeted snare. Showcased here on Jensen. Well done, Golden <laughs> Blue. Doing well in the scrims, just seeing if he can translate that to stage. Gets the HP, but Jensen's just kind of, I believe, toying with this and maybe even baiting in for something. Yeah, I mean, Jensen's been shoving him all game. You right. can see that in the CS right now. Jensen out to a pretty good CS lead over him. Double bubble on the bottom, though, it's sneaky. They did not expect that to happen. He gets out. Smoothie a little too close there. It actually catches them up both. Very nicely done for Matt and the team to see that. They actually just got most of their summoners back up, so Liquid yeah. trying to go aggressive when they have the chance. Rainover goes over the back of the dragon pit. We're looking to try and take Whoa, them down. Lays out the red carpet. We'll see if they can get him on this one. Oh, caught up in his own minions. Flame spitter and collateral damage to end it. And now it's going to be on the bot lane. Piglet looking like he's going to have to slalom through the minions. They're looking at Matt as well. And it doesn't look like Smoothie can really help this one out. There's the heal. They're going to be fighting Ruby the two brush. Here. I think they're all right. <laughs> Contracts is just whimsy slapping Piglet oh. left and right. Gets the shot down. Here comes Jensen weaving some walls. Can they follow up? Matt finally uses that flash. He was holding to try and protect Piglet. Yeah, really good flash there to, to flash that binding. And the bottom lane does get uh, one kill handed over here, but Team Liquid, Rainover keeps up the pressure on top side and they get the first turret bonus. So they stay ahead of Cloud9. Uh, they're on a pretty good course right now uh, as far as the game. Uh, it's only really the worrisome CS in the mid lane. Uh, but even so, with that roam, with the pressure that Jensen had, wasn't able to grab the extra kill down bottom for them. And Team Liquid uh, are feeling pretty good about the the start of this game. Let's take another look at Rainover. This is just before, uh, right. I believe he jumped over the back of that wall. Maybe he was caught by a ward, and that's why Ray started going early. But uh, Ray here, slowed by the carpet. They know he doesn't have the flash. Went back in for the knockback, and good execution there. As Rainover is able to land his ultimate. And this is Smoothie just trying to bait Piglet in to keep him in range. Oftentimes, you'll get super mad at your support for coming to try and help right here and then actually getting hit by that arrow. But Smoothie outranges it, eight. plus had the shield, so might not have even died to it. But uh, they do get that one. Confirmation, jumped over the wall. <laughs> able to get it. He did jump. So smoothie sneaky back to lane. 74 to 65, not a lane you usually see falling behind. 
We'll see if they can repair this one. We haven't seen too much love from Contract's bottom, except for those two times, but Rainover has been bottom and top, trying to utilize and push forward each lane. Yeah, and they've been very efficient ganks. Yep. Uh, they've been ganks at the tail end of his route. So he's clearing most of his jungle and then ending up on that side with a very uh, good opportunity yep. already there for him. So they've been very efficient ganks, and he hasn't fallen behind at all in CS. He's actually quite far ahead here uh, of contracts. Even though the CS numbers are very misleading, he does still have this experience advantage, uh, which does not lie. Definitely does help uh, with the extra kills that he's gotten, though. And Rainover is really set up well uh, to control this game. Yep. One of the things we thought we were going to see more of from Team Liquid, especially when you see the roster, is bottom lane focus. Um, and it is nice to see that they're rewarded for yeah. going bottom so early. Even though Contracts did get one back, I think it's uh, definitely been a good part of the snowball of this game as Rainover is now able to transfer that into the first Drake to uh, grab Cloud Drake for themselves. With all that pressure top, Ray, 81 to 71, still able to farm it out, is Jace, but making sure he's keeping that farm up so he can be a menace when they get to the objective stage. Only 11 minutes in here, a 3,000 gold lead, though, for Liquid, looking much better, but we've seen Cloud9 mm. turn these around in an instant. Here's a little bit of trying to get that back. Top lane will have rain over in just a minute. It's all up to Lorlo to keep himself alive. Woo. By a little more time, contract's close. Gonna be the hit, collateral damage goes out, does not do enough, and the follow-up is not there. Cloud9, in and out. Yeah, and Golden Glue already used his Realm Warp to get up here, so he doesn't have it now to try and chase anyone down for any uh, counter kill. But yeah, Lorlo, no Zonia's completed yet, so three men is definitely enough to take him down. Good Realm there from Cloud9, taking advantage of the Talia. Thought he was gonna uh, blast going over a little earlier there, but Golden Glue gonna be able to walk down the river, no problem. One kill picked up for Cloud9, but you know no objective afterwards. So uh, it's not the worst thing here in the world for Team Liquid. And with all these roams that Jensen's been doing, Golden Glue's catching up quite easily in CS here on the rise and building up to his his mana items. Should be able to complete his Rod of Ages fairly soon. Tears already stacking. Let's take a look here though, as Talia is going to be first of the roam. Very easy for him. Contract is already in place and. The Flash, uh, once you see three people, yeah. his idea, what has he was going to be able to buy more time and get a little bit more damage out so that Rainover and, and Golden Blue could Woo. clean up, but wasn't able to do so. It almost looked like uh, Cloud9 said, we have to do this as well. They didn't really have vision on Rainover. They were flooding that top lane, so biting back, as he would say. They're able to get themselves that on a quick decision. Rainover back in, taking his red. Get a little bit of a roam here from Lorlo in the top lane and start moving a ward line forward and start helping each other out. Yeah, and we are transitioning to the stage of the game where uh, we would like to see more grouping. The the redemption has come in for contracts on the Ivern. Uh, he's ready with Daisy. So a, lar a very, very potent team fight um, from Ivern currently. And uh, if you do group up with the Jace, with the uh, poke from Jin and Talia as well, Try and whittle, whittle down some extra pressure here. Looks like he is making his way through through the lane towards bottom once again. And the teleports for both top laners uh, are ready. So if they do focus down in that area once again, it could be very explosive. Be the right time. Looks like the wave just kind of reset the top side. Mm. Bit of a roam from They're range. It already. Clear. See where these wards are being placed. So behind the pit, you got one for TL. Looks like they can hold this by themselves. So now Ray is out. They should be able to take down contracts quite quick. No teleport still. Ray is, or Lorlo, I should say, is backing yeah. off, though, if he's needed. And they're able to just take down contracts. Their Vision own quick decision. Advantage yeah. there. Plus the power of Graves. There's no way you can go contest at that tri bush as Rainover just walks right down, is clearing out the pink ward in their vision. And that ward over the back of the dragon pit allowed Cold and Blue to start that one up. They call to Ray immediately. This could be stop teleports. He's right on the Jensen if he does come in. Looks like they are going to complete on both oh, sides. Ooh. Lorlo, not in a spot he wanted to be. Cloud9 was saying if he comes down, we take him down. And it works out. Yeah, that was a very poor uh, completion of that teleport. He's not on a tank. Yeah. You know, you can try and complete that and know that you're going to take a decent amount of damage on a tank coming out of that. But as Rumble, still no Zonia is completed. 
that is a terrible teleport that you have got to cancel at the last second there. If you look at the positioning of the champions, too much damage in place for Cloud9. They immediately take him out. And that is a free kill handed over. Tower defense complete here for C9. So they close the gold gap a little bit. We'll see how they start to fire back. We'll Take see a this. look at yeah, it. Yeah, one more and, time. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, they're definitely trying to bully down here. And they're like, okay, we can match numbers. But Ray coming in first and Jensen showing up. There's still time to cancel that even after they see Jensen. So, uh, you know, the call was definitely made there to, to allow him yeah. to come in. And you can see Rainover moved up a little bit to try and screen with damage. But that is, that is not going to help you out. Like, even Ray just went straight hammer form and went all the way into the fight. Not something you usually it's see. Like, oh, they're completing? They're completing? <laughs> ah, juicy. I'm Ray. Let's go. Black Heat Cleaver on him already. Contracts. He has been found out in the jungle. A big uh, reason that Cloud9 can get a lead in the early game. But he has had a hard time. Oh, Daisy's out and looking for a stun. As the Flash Matt tried to get away with that deadly flourish. Right. Lock it up for his team, but they all get out alive. Painover immediately focuses the Daisy, trying to take her down. Not only do you get good gold out of her, <laughs> um, but it's definitely worth focusing that and taking out the front line uh, when they're trying to collapse. I have to say, this game is going so much better for Team Liquid than anybody really expected. Yep. Um, and we talked about, oh yeah, I know, maybe that game against Fox was kind of a turnaround for them. And Golden Blue in his interview talked about the team meeting that they had and the team was feeling much better, yeah. even though it looked like they were still you know, struggling a little bit and making some mistakes. This, this is so much better for them. Um, they are just jumping on Cloud9, making picks on Cloud9 in their own jungle yep. and, and coming away with it. Definitely like the proactivity that we're seeing from Team Liquid. Try and turn their season around here against uh, yeah. the number one team. So I wonder as well, this Graves pickup that came in. Obviously, Kha'Zix would have done as much damage, but this is is this Contract's Grave? Is that what he wanted? And Whoa, was, hold on a second with that. Very decision. Jensen just getting out of this one alive. Collateral damage leaves him with just a sliver of health. Golden Glue's now the target. Ray gets a triple shot and fires off a blast. He's going to be able to get the kill. Got to be very careful as in comes Lorlo. Throws down the equalizer to kind of calm things down. As Piglet comes in from the river as well. Woo! <laughs> there you go. Jinx! Yeah, no vision there. Not able to land that one. And they are down Golden Blue, but they're starting up this Drake. They really want control of the Inferno. They saw two members back. Nice Jin ultimate here to force them off. Trading the damage. Rainover wants to stay in for the smite fight, but he's pretty low. Oh, got next down. It. it was 84 health! <laughs> Contracts kind of try to time his end of the line. Or, I'm sorry, rain over, and Contracts yeah. was like, no, that's mine. Thank you. So first dragon, second dragon, I should say, going to C9. Jensen back to pushing mid. I get so into those fight fights that are actually both of the junglers in a decently dangerous position where they're taking damage, and, uh, man, the, the huh? adrenaline just starts pumping. When I guess I'm going to say, not that it matters at 10 to 11 in the amount of health, but Contracts does have a weaker smite in this factor. Yeah. Still times right. it right. That's all it's about. Let's see it again. Yeah. Okay, so here's the, the screening ultimate. They want to push him off. Contracts moves in for the uh, just straight up uh, duel of smites here. Oh, no, no, Kobe. Baited. No, we won't. You get to watch a cupcake fight. What a tease. That, sorry, Daisy is just too. getting annihilated here. Yeah. Not having the same effect. Def definitely a different recipe today. 18 minutes in, and Team Liquid kind of holding a 2k gold lead. Cloud9 was able to take a thousand of that back, if you will. But they aren't finding many kills. Rainover keeps getting some, and then that opens up the map a lot for Team Liquid. Yeah. I do want to return to your point that you were going to bring up before that excitement broke out, Riv, because I thought it was a super good one. You know, returning to this Rainover Graves pick, Great. And, uh, and how he's been, he's yeah. been doing actually very well on Kha'Zix. Um, but it's just such a different playstyle. Like, we talked about him. You know, being a, the more controlling jungler and, and trying to stay more at range and, and uh, farming here, he's really, really used the extra pressure rather than, you know, Kha'Zix is much more of a, much more of a commitment and uh, putting yourself in danger there. And we had seen him, um, you know, get blown up on a decent amount of times when he went in. True. I do have to say, though, Kha'Zix is still a very, very strong pick. Um, it's just that, you know, he put a lot of time in on Graves recently for the solo queue. Um, and with the lethality build, yeah, there's a it's definitely been one of uh, multiple junglers' favorites. I do like it in this one because melee versus Daisy is oh. always rough. Bye -bye. Oh man, a bye Matt, bye. Did Matt land the the first snare? There? I think it was just chain straight of, chain of corruption ah, okay, into bubble. Piglet got it. Yeah. Well, we said we were going to keep an eye on the CC from the bottom lane here yeah. from Team Liquid, and they are definitely impressing. Pack it on. 
Ray is having a field day here in the top lane. He could still provide some uh, unknown damage. We haven't seen the poke coming from him yet, but Team Liquid has moved around so fast, I don't think he has much of a chance to set up. So he stays top lane, continues to push, and hopes to grab Lorlo's respect here. Team Liquid do back off, but he will have a second tier to himself, giving the team some good gold through his work top lane. Yep, C9 still going to be able to get a bat, a decent amount of gold. And even though we're, we're super hyped up for Team Liquid, you know, doing hey. much, much better than uh, than previously in yeah. the se yeah. season, Cloud9, we still have to remember, they're only a 1,000 gold behind, plus they have an Infernal trick, which actually, ha you know, the value of that one is, is still going up. So uh, they're in a, actually a pretty decent spot. Uh, we'll just want to see a little bit more of the uh, coordinated uh, team fight from them where they bring the, the siege with the siege of yep. their, um, with Ivern with the extra poke and, and try and make use of, of the brush here to try and uh, whittle down Team Liquid. Liquid's felt pretty confident about roaming around and pathing this bottom half of the jungle. They've taken out contracts a few times and he's given them a lot of trouble. You see the wards being set up by Cloud9, trying to stop that bit of a snowball TL has. All right. They're actually making the call for the split push. You see those pings on bottom? Those are for Cloud9, telling Ray to go for the turret. Uh, they're dedicated to this Jace uh, turret killing, and they're going to have to have some communication here, as uh, Golden Glue does have Realm Warp ready and could try and cut him off. So they force him off the split push and relieve all pressure on that mid push. I get a ward up toward the Baron, it seems here. Get that ping on. You know, there's quite a bit of damage over on the side of Liquid. They could definitely lay down and jockey for a fight and come out on top. So Cloud9 does not want to have that chance. Really put a few steps ahead for themselves to stay safe. The CS in the lanes is going very well for Cloud9. Top lane 180 to 132, 212 to 197. See if Piglet and Mac can still get this team into some fights here. It seems like things have slowed down a little bit with their non-tank game. Yeah, we'll see because they definitely still should keep up the siege on the last outer turret. Mm -hmm. And Team Liquid are trying to wear them down. Um, this is oh Realm Warp coming in. Yeah, don't take that one. <laughs> uh, they're going to be able to use that though for zoning and finish up the turret. Good pick up there for Team Liquid to increase the gold lead. But this is where it does really get tricky, right? Because I would cons you know, consider Rumble almost a 50-50 semi-range champion. So if you consider him semi-range, then this is almost a you know 10 range champions in the game. Uh, and it's, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons true. for being a little bit less likely to commit to one of those melee assassins, because everyone from the other team, uh, they're all ranged. They can scud like, out well. and they can focus fire. You know, whoever jumps in as as what would be the only melee is pretty easy focus call. Uh, you just get blown up. So this, the team fights do get a little complicated, uh, and it really does put an extra emphasis on the uh, team fight coordination for these guys and the shot calling and focus fire within that team fight. So they can DPS down, uh, you know, the priority target that yep. is close enough for all of them. In the meantime, though, that split push does take its toll. Merc treads on top of his hex drinker, so he can actually give Golden Glue a pretty good run for his money before having to get out of there. Clear on Baron to make sure they have the calls necessary and the movement. Right now, Rainover is just clearing his jungle. Liquid here, not finding themselves in this position quite often, have been holding the game pretty well, also aggressing. So it's like Cloud9 seems they have the waves in their favor, and they're going to go ahead and start pushing turrets and see how TL responds. Yeah, uh, Varus is pretty good wave clear here. Nami wave comes out. Daisy immediately, oh. Daisy watches contracts go into a bubble, flash away, good shield right. by Smoothie, but they still get him down. Sneaky taking a huge chunk of damage, Golden Glue flashing forward and making the flux count. A double kill for him, and TL can back off here. Summoners are down and things are getting hairy. Contracts right into the flank of Golden Glue there. Nice job by Team Liquid, pincer movement. They're able to set this up with Matt landing his wave into the bubble. Yeah. Golden Glue with the flank, and they just have everyone there a split second first. Ray came off of the split pushing as well, so they move right over to the Baron. Teleport's still available for Ray, and he's coming in. TP on the back. This is Jace's favorite here. If he can get enough damage in, Team Liquid is not going to come out of this happy. They don't. They can't Low. decide which way to go. He's going to be on the left. Red Team gets Baron. That's for Liquid, and they might be able to fight their way out. Cheeky little wall here coming in. And the shock. <laughs> shock Comes up short. 
The shock blast, just a blast, and just misses. Oh man, what a good, decisive moment here from Team Liquid. So Chris, they get the kill on the jungler. They see Ray in the side lane, immediately yeah. make this call, switch over to the Baron. They know there's no smite that's gonna try and, and come here, but let, once again, let's look at this as, it was set up by Piglet once again. So Piglet lands the Chain of Corruption. That's why Matt's able to you know, land with the, with the wave and the bubble as well. Golden Blue's in there with the flank and Ooh, cleans up the extra kill, chasing down the back line. All right, here they go with their Baron of Power. Push to be able to get this trip pretty easily. Side lane pushing as well. Lorlo is bringing up the bottom wave. Instant action. A lot of times if teams are able to make hits on somebody like Cloud9, their waves aren't anywhere near they need to be. Now Liquid's able to act on the fights, the Baron, and now the lanes that they held even. Cloud9 was even winning in a few, so Lick was really coming out strong here. 25 minutes in, it looks like second tier gets hit. They are Whoa. going for smoothie. One more shot, he goes down, pulling the trigger whenever they get the chance. It does not look like Liquid's gonna be stopped for this second tier. Just a few more shots from the curtain call, and Liquid say thank you very much. A little more global goal. Taking gold. that in. Golden Blue in with minions oh, as well. Ray out of nowhere, bopping Piglet down. Got him on the side here, and that should put a stop to it. Four versus three at the moment. Whew. Yeah, Sniper Ray up there on the side was able to take out the extra kill, but man, Team Liquid did get another turret, so inflate the gold lead a little yep. bit. The Dragon should definitely be theirs uh, for the taking, as there's a lot of uh, housework to do here for Cloud9 to try and get their minion waves back in position. Much more decisive plays and communication here from Liquid. Or everybody's behind each other. One or the other, or everything coming together. Yeah, man. Lots last, and lots of stuff. The last couple sets from Team Liquid were, were very worrying uh, for, for fans yeah. over the last couple weeks. But, you know, they had their reset at the very end of last week. And good showing so far. This is still game one of the series. Mm -hmm. But it definitely bodes well. Much more competitive than we thought. See if they can actually finish it out. Baron buff, they still have a bit of time on it and would like to make the most of that siege, uh, considering yeah. both of these teams do have very similar strength with that poke. Came into this looking at Rainover and contracts, and kind of the disparity that Rainover has found compared to his previous seasons. He's showing a little bit of old-fashioned Rainover in this game. 4 0 3, 185 CS to 89. A little inflated, but still just destroying the jump. Yeah, here comes Golden Glue, brings up the minions. Uh, they've got a quarter of Baron buff left on them, so all the outer turrets have been taken down. And the true test. The turret. The inhibitor turret. They are dropping instantly. Mountain Drake on top of Rainover's power. He gets up close, mm. and chunks of health just come off of those things. 5k gold lead. They were able to spread that a little bit more. So Liquid throwing money on the ground. Golden glue. Shh. He's hiding. Using the enemy Ivern brush <laughs> against them. One of the... One of the best. Ooh, Vorlo gets picked. Able to flash out. That leaves Matt to get hit. Daisy can't make it to Matt for three, but it is Sneaky that can. Calls the curtain down on him. Jensen low to go. Oh, go to Flanking in from the side. Flank number two to produce more kills. Three kills for the team across the board, and now they're going to make their way into the base. Piglet's chain of corruptions have just been killing everyone they chain yes. to. Lorlo lands his Rumble Ultimate right over the top there, and that that just picked, turned around the entire fight, got them two more kills, and now they've taken down the inhibitor. That's that final test. Teleport's actually going in top as well. Ray just behind them. He flashes himself in, tries to get more kills. Rain over close to going down, but is necessary to stay up here if they want to keep going for turrets. It'd be a little sketchy. Top one may be in their eyes here. Ooh. They're going to have to get out. Five seconds on to Sneaky. They don't want to toy with that crowd control. Man, Piglet was offended by being put on the bottom of uh, Mark's AD carry list or something because he has been pretty pretty accurate here on Varus this game. Definitely setting up quite a few plays for the team. And everyone's been able to layer CC right after that. The Rumble ultimate's become much easier to land. Matt has been able to get not only his ultimate, but also a lot of bubbles. One inhibitor down, and now the game gets much easier for Team Liquid. See if they can hold on. Uh, Hold their composure and close in the out. game. Yeah. Make sure there's that closeout factor. You got to keep the pressure on. Cloud9 will find an opening. And you can see through a little bit of Baron power play work. We'll still get that gold up there and really 
that that equals having everything in place, as I said before. Teams usually don't have another wave to push after they fight Cloud9. You're repairing things. You're trying to make sure they don't take a turret after you fight them. Mm. But this is Liquid. Stepping forward off of every fight, the fights look good in communication, too. They gotta keep it going, though. It's a very long split. Things are looking better, though, here in this game of week four. Nothing true. Three quarters of a game doesn't doesn't mean everything is It does, rated. Kobe. It's <laughs> fixed. All right. Well, Cloud9 are gonna keep up that split push. You know, Jace is level 16, so they can call Ray back if they have to commit to this. Uh, another Realm Warp here from Golden Glue really reduces the amount of reaction time. They're gonna forfeit this one and give up two inhibitors now. There'll be double super minions coming in, uh, trying to buy some time for Ray to trade. He does get the trade done, but the defense here for Cloud9 is gonna be fairly difficult as Baron comes up in 50 seconds. So you'll see a really easy call here from Team Liquid. They're gonna force on this uh, blue quadrant of Cloud9's territory. Actually, Ray's still going. He's gonna get a hit over turret in that trade. And that might put a little bit more pressure, but the game plan will remain the same. Baron coming up will be the focal area. Team Liquid will use the vision they already have to try and uh, bait Cloud9 into a bad spot so that they can land more Chains of Corruption into, you know, things like Rumble Ultimate through the jungle corridors. Ray backing on 2,000 gold. Make it sound so easy, Kobe. I mean, they already have so <laughs> much vision set up. And they have two inhibitors down, so let's take a look at the, the pick, though. So this was a good pick on Delorlo, um, but then moving up here, and you kind of lose track of all the things you have to dodge. Piglet got the sneaky chain of corruptions out there. Ooh. It chains over to Smoothie and Sneaky and Jensen, and Lorlo put his Rumble Ultimate right down on top of all of them. And look at that sucker. Snares all of them in place. This absolutely devastating team fight, and that that is something that is not that easy to pull off. Like that, that definitely... Oh, what? No! Deadly Sneaky! flourish! Sneaky Botley! What the... No! <laughs> hey, Grimmie said it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be so easy for them. That be so, so easy. Holy moly! Sneaky trying his best to save the game with the Sneaky W. The Baron buff will help out so much with defending your base as well. Yikes. That... That it might be one of the only things that can help out defending this double inhibitor down. The best thing too, there's nothing else to draw Cloud9 out of the base, so they could just farm now. What is this this what? is actually insane. What is life? He threads it right through. Matt walks out of it. He doesn't block part of the. But man, and regardless, that is just the most insane steal that we've seen in a very long time. He said, "Piglet, I remember your quirky steal." Uh, I'll let you finish. Bro. I, yeah, yeah. So, Cloud9, huge for stopping the waves now coming in. But we'll see if Team Liquid is far I, enough ahead. That is just, oh man, I know you don't like want to take damage and you used to like dodge <laughs> skill shots, but you, somebody step in there and block that because uh, that, may, that may cost them a turnaround here. Holy moly. Well then, Rip. Well, two, let's... Two, lanes, two lanes being pushed in. They're trying to do their damnedest to not allow a minion wave up to the turret. Thank God they're not barren minions. Deadly Flourish goes out. Grenade didn't hit anyone, and neither did the captive audience. It's just Ray still pushing the top side. They are going to go tried and true to this split push until Cloud9 can hold off any power that Liquid has, and they're equal. It's going to be a little bit more time, but they're definitely going to reach it if this keeps happening. Oh, man, I'm just, I'm still cracking up what over that. What a play Cause... from Sneaky. I mean, this is this is such. We keep talking about how big of a great of a comeback this is, and still is that for Team Liquid, right? They played so much of the game really well. Yep. They they still have you know a good gold lead. They have map lead. They have you know Drake's coming in for them. Um, but those are the types of, of mistakes where I mean somebody's got to step in front of that um, and block that sucker off because that's literally the only thing. That's going to take away uh, the early game. It becomes the test, you. Kobe. It'll all look too good. In the road to victory, there are sometimes mistakes. And we'll have to see if Liquid can get over that one. I don't know, a mistake. It's just a good play by Sneaky. But it will test them here. We have questioned, you know, will it happen in the early game? They were able to get over Cloud9 in the early game. But now can they kind of hold the lead they have and not be shook by what just happened? 33, 34 minutes in, things are kind of evening out. We're gonna get jockeying for the Elder Dragon, I believe, after Vision. Yeah, they do have a, a while for it to start, yeah. so. No, they do. But man, it is, it is 
right back to a pretty close one here. Riv. Let's see how they do jockey for that position and set up vision uh, around that Elder Dragon. As of right now, Cloud9 are making a push uh, outside of their base, which is very healthy to see from them, uh, considering the situation they were just in. Three three control wards down for themselves, and they've moved up a little bit there. Bot inhib is about to, or I should say, top inhib is about to spawn for them as well. Uh -huh. Second, so the base is looking healthy. They can finally get these wards out. What are we looking for again from Liquid? It's kind of known now what they're going to try to do. I don't think C9 is going to step out for any more of these Chain of Corruption flanks and equalizers. Yeah. So how does Liquid find their new win? Is it just to get the waves again and push in? Yeah, so they still do um, have that extra uh, ooh, line running down. And they're trying to push down this bottom, which is the only one with a turret left. That was a lot. Decent amount of harassment. They're, they're really buying time for the split right now, um, Cloud9. Uh, that Ray is pushing uh, top side, and nobody can really answer. Uh, Team Liquid, though, yeah. They really, since, it, since it's kind of evened out after that Baron, um, and especially since Cloud9 have this Infernal Drake, it is so much about setting it up so you can pull that exact same play pattern of uh, landing your long-range mm -hmm. CC to try and set up these devastating Rumble ultimates, because that's basically what both teams are packing here. A lot of those skill shots and the, the landing of them. Oh, goodness, he's got a Zonius. So that was a very risky move from Ray. Let's see if he gets out of it. He's got... Oh, he goes in, not out! Did he get the kill? Oh, he does! Oh, nice. One for one, he says, if I'm going down, someone's coming with me. Let's well, see what the scatter provides for the teams. We got Smoothie coming out of base. It doesn't look like anything can really be acted on. All right. <laughs> Well, they've taken on the split push threat, so that's something. Uh, but once again, yeah, we'll see if there is any sort of vision being set up because the ways in for Team Liquid are the flanks from Golden Glue's Realm Warps, you know, bringing somebody in, or the uh, oh. Nami Wave landing. Another Yomu's chain hits! Yomu's triggered. Sneaky back. Smoothie's trying to deliver the damage as well. Contracts has to flash himself to shield Sneaky because Sneaky wants to ult. Everybody's oh. out of range of that curtain call, so he drops it back down and the show continues. Looking for a double buff onto somebody. Talia Wall weaves in, and they're actually going down for Golden Glue. Uh -oh. They want to take him off the map. They feel like they can fight the rest of the team. Lorlo's coming in with teleport, so they can't go too far. Divide and conquer here for Cloud9. They completely split up Team Liquid. They're all out of sorts, and they were in three different spots on the map at that point. Really good focus here. Cloud9 are able to take back that one, as so much zoning from the contracts and Daisy combo here, plus Sneaky in. Taking him out means they're trying to push it down. This be the oh, he hit the W again! Lorlo has it. Jensen stays alive. Good shield from Contracts. There's no hit there on Burn, and Sneaky will stay alive as well. You have 20 seconds onto Golden Glue, and Cloud9 getting chased out. But go, Riv. are not afraid to fight back. This has to be strenuous now for Liquid, knowing their backs are against the wall after such a start to the game. Your Elder Dragon is coming up shortly, Riv, as is the Baron. Let's take another right. look at this, though. That was one of the uh, classic rank. classic rush play, but Gets you usually go for those when you have some more info on where the rest <laughs> of the team is. Um, Lolo actually used his flash there, so it was it was even a uh, an even summoner trade as far as uh, him going for that one versus one. So he was able to take one down with him, as he said. But uh, all in all, very risky play to go for that without any vision of any of the other members. Didn't end up costing them as even Cloud9 and the foreground four were able to take an advantage for themselves. But man, Baron coming up and then Elder Dragon very shortly after. We'll see if this vision Cloud9 has set up allow them to land another, or uh, Team Liquid allow them to land another snare. Just a bit of go on his last back piglet did furnish that Muramana. We'll see if that can add any more to these boys. They land another oh. snare and everyone leaves him at the Realm Warp! Holy sh- that, Oh man, they leave into the Baron, but Worth? Piglet was left <laughs> out and it's gonna be an inhibitor trade for a Baron. Oh, Ray's going ham. They're pinging in mid lane, actually. They got another two of them! Are they gonna keep them all down here? Ray's still pushing. Ray's going for the Nexus turrets right now. He's continuing oh, right to stay over. with that much damage. He is gonna destroy these turrets. Rain over can't get back. They have Baron, even the enhanced backs. One Nexus turret gets hit. Oh, they're going Golden Blue cannot fight this anymore alone. Ray's just gonna kite it out. And there's the equalizer top oh, lane. Fights goodness. across the board, coast to coast. Liquid is going oh. to be down and out. Out and Cloud Nine's looking for the base. Whoa, what a big swing for C9. I want a replay of that Realm Morg to see how Piglet got left out. I think it's just the snare Woo. kept him in place. 
But man, what a devastating move right there as you just feel so bad for the AD carry. <laughs> the entire team beams themselves out into Baron Pit to go for the big play. And Ray is able to get the split pushing done as Sneaky lands more and more snares to grab more kills for Cloud9. Whew. All right, let's take a look at it. Okay, so they make this plan like, all right, we're going to get out of here. We're going to oh, oh, get no. locked. You guys locked. Snared, yeah, it was right on the edge of the road, boy, but everyone's like reaching out to Piglet. No, I can't bring you with us. Goodbye. Cloud9 now going to be able to actually rush down this Elder Dragon. Our team Liquid going in for it. Rainover wants a piece. Miracle Steel, it's blind. Cut off on one side. Miracle Steel does not come through. Contracts Elder Dragon over to C9. And Liquid's trying to fight from their safety of the jungle. Not oh. warded up. They do have that upper hand, but now it's Contracts inside. They're going to have the vision they need. Canceling out Rain over one, two. Gets over oh, the wall with the true game. He fights his way back in. Rain over playing out huge on this one. Sneaky tries to get over oh. the wall, but he's taken out as well. Rain over never gives up, and the team backs him up. Oh, man. Rain over does not want to lose this game. 9-0-4 on Graves has just been Ooh. dominating. Grits his teeth and takes Derek's down. Derek's coming up huge. Holy moly. This is an action-packed game, bro. I, was, I wasn't ready for this uh, <laughs> Friday night action here, but... Definitely a barn burner between Team Liquid and Cloud9. Again, Cloud9 did get the Elder Dragon before this happened. So they fight this even against the Elder Dragon. The rush there from Ivern means that there's no vision for rain over, so they, they pretty easily pick this up. And then you think they're going to be able to chase down Team Liquid and use this burn damage. Sneaky's already taken out Golden Glow. He opens up for the extra slows. And at this point, it's like, oh, how are they getting out of this one? But rain over with the Graves fights his way out of that corner. Now they're inside the base. They got another, ooh, the counter kill actually. Yeah. As Jensen took down Matt. Didn't quite see the setup for it, but uh, Matt does find himself back in the fountain. I feel like at this point, Jensen would be exploding. <laughs> Matt Oh, here we go again. Ray's coming into the fog of war here. They have Ray to save the day. He doesn't know where the wards are. He's trying to see if they are actually going to react differently, and I think he's figured out they haven't seen me. Gotta play this one nice and <laughs> oh. quiet. This is an AD carry versus jungler, Tinky versus Rainover. Who can, Look, uh... Ray's still trotting around in the jungle. Finally joins the team. This turret not long for this world. Make sure there's no vision behind them. We don't want to get teleported on and then get the equalizer, which is actually down. So plays from Team Liquid are held off for quite some time here to get around the side of Cloud9. Straight down the middle, Curtain Call is out to expose the Panther. turret, but they say Curtain Call, you're going to be standing still, we'll take that fight. So ultimate from Sneaky down, that's the one they've been initiating with. I think I like that call by Liquid to pull the trigger as well. Yeah, it is. Oof, man, this is a impressive. Ooh. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of oohs and a lot of ahs in this game, but uh, <laughs> let's get back to how they finish this one out. Siege will continue. Elder Dragon going to time out, so they're doing this without the extra burn. Rainover's a little bit far away, so they can't fight this, and it's a good little sneak here from Cloud9. Team Liquid thought they completely backed off, and that's enough time for them to take out the turret. Ultimates will be coming back up. This is that time I was talking about before. FTL's even able to repair something here with a the fight. Their lanes are all the way pushed up now. This is what Cloud9 was able to stop when TL was pushing them in. Cloud9 only had to deal with one of the inhibitor turrets, and now they're putting on the pressure. Liquid's got a back oh, off. Oh, Sneaky's going down! Piglet on the side. Sneaky must be Ooh. out. And Piglet is trying to do everything he can outside the base by himself. They're still in here. The brush from Ivern is so annoying. You threats, don't say. Threats lie in every brush here. Cloud9 finally are able to get that inhibitor and get the pressure once again. Man. Whew. Lorlo's um, Rumble ultimate there, though, being traded in counter for the Jin ultimate whenever Sneaky does open up, uh, presents a pretty good target. And they were able to chase him off once, but Cloud9 relentless, returning to that mid lane siege, and finally did get it. It took so long, though, that the bottom one responded for Team Liquid. So really, we're looking at more Barons coming up, Riv. I Minute like and 40 seconds. We'll see if they actually push inside the base before then, or just push up and then draw back to get vision in this blue quadrant. That's what that's what we'd expect again. We keep expecting more vision around blue quadrant so they can land these skill shots for the corridors. Um, but 
We've had action break out again and it, again and again. It's been ridiculous. Contracts and rain over. This game is 15 to 15. They both have 13 in, or 12 and 13 in kill participation. Definitely has been ridiculous. Ray does not have his teleport to get back for this one. So Team Liquid pushing inside. They're rushing it once again. Jensen cuts them off, but still Ray's going for the hard split push. They're just trying to delay this. Jensen cleans off. He's safe from Mikhail's Crucible. Golden Glue goes down immediately. That's quite a bit of damage. Rain over and Piglet can stay alive. They still Only have one next a third there. able to fire in. Lorlo's taking a lot of poke. And Blink Team Liquid's Blink taking him. everything in. Rain over taking down Jensen. A huge play forward. Ray's off the last next turn. Split it. Gonna be the hit. TL has to get back. They don't even have Baron. Ray's gonna be able to take this one. And he has the Nexus down to half. Ray has split his own game the entire time. And Ray from the side lanes wins the game for Cloud9. We'll have to go back and look at the second game that was we playing that, that was the, uh, being played the whole time. Holy moly. Oh, goodness. Key turning moments in this game. Sneaky W's the Baron. Sneaky W. Everyone from Team Luka kind of dodges out of the way of it. <laughs> oh, man. And that was the start of the comeback for C9. Then Ray waits in the bush, gets some crazy 1v4 action going on, takes people down, and keeps up the split push. And Cloud9 eventually grind out the win. It was 26, 27, 28 minutes. Liquid was already taken down inhibitor turrets near the base. Ooh. Definitely a game to look at of how to stop a lot of pressure from happening. Cloud9 was really able to stave that off immediately and then find Sneaky a Baron, which really, really helped. For a deep dive into that C9 win, let's check in with our analysts. Thank you very much, Riv. Kobe's very right in saying that that was a grind for C9 there to pick up the Oof. victory in game one of this series. Ray winning it with the split push yep. there on Jace. And that's kind of the first person I really want to target here in our analysis is, hey, let's give him his report card. He's back on the LCS stage. We heard from Jat, who had spoken to Reaper, that he has been doing better in scrims. They wanted to get him some more stage time with the team and have another go at it. What are your thoughts? I mean, he kind of looks like classic Ray from Apex, right? He likes to play super aggressive. He likes to do risky things. Uh, sometimes it, it kind of bit him. I mean, he, he got an early lead in top lane, really threw it away on an overchase that caused him to die later. Yep. Um, you know, the aggressive trade with Lorlo, top lane, one for one kill, that kind of ended up working out. But, but really, overall, even though he kind of ended up being like the star of the show because he ended the game, I thought it was much more about his team playing well than really Ray because TL basically made the decision to not even answer the split push. And, and I think it's a, an interesting case study in Cloud9 without impact, Cloud9 with uh, or with impact. Impact on tanks would have given their team so much more direction and ability to fight. They seemed a little bit less sure of how to play this strategy where Ray is, you know, dominating the split push and they have to play to that win condition solely. Let's go ahead and dive into some replays. You mentioned the aggressiveness top. Let's take a look at this. Rain over ganking top. It's gonna get turned around. Or not rain over, sorry. Uh, contract yeah. ganking top. Uh, and this already got the flash. You've, al you've already missed your shot blast there. You probably need to stop actually chasing, right? They don't wanna know where rain over is. Rain over comes in and he's able to now force out Ray's flash. Ray was a up a, a lot in farm, and because he blew his flash there, went pretty aggressive, he now dies to this gank, then loses first turret. So he ends up actually behind in the laning phase as far as gold goes, you know, on Jace, which is this kind of lane dominant pick, and, and that was a little bit of kind of he wanted it too bad. Right, you look at something like that and you go, uh-oh, this game is you know, going downhill quickly for Cloud9 here. You've got yeah. what should be the dominant side lane pushing champion in, or, and yeah. duelist in Jace. He's now set far behind. The other team's got a 1.5k, 2k gold advantage. But Barons. Barons is where it all fell apart for Team Liquid. They got the first one within the first 25 minutes, used that to push in the base, but it was Barons 2 and 3 that really caused some trouble for him. And, and this one is just a disaster. I mean, I mean, Teal was so far ahead at, at this point in the game, and Rainover, to his credit, had an amazing game, doesn't even use his smite there. That is just brutal. That would have been the game-ending Baron with two inhibitors down. And, and now this one, uh, Piglet kind of gets left out to dry here as he's rooted up by Sneaky. Credit to him for that play. But this ended up being a very bad turn of events for TL as, yeah, sure, they get the Baron, but they're losing their base. They end up losing exit kills here. Uh, this delayed the game so much between the stolen Baron and this disaster Baron mm -hmm. that it allowed Ray to get 
a lot done with his split foot. Right, he doesn't win the game here, but already putting pressure onto the Nexus turrets. He'll win the game in a very similar fashion with Cloud9 essentially chasing the trailing members of Team Liquid up the mid lane. And so, yes, the strategy worked here with the Jace and that that is technically how they realized the victory. But it didn't feel clean, and it didn't necessarily feel like C9 crafted this victory. And I think yeah. that's the big thing. It almost felt handed to them or lost more so by Team Liquid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was a lot of kind of strange stuff from Wolo in particular. Uh, you know, there was a phase for about between six and eight minutes where he was grouped with the team, didn't pick up any farm, ended up falling down three levels because of, because of that. Wasn't even involved in an assist during that entire time. You know, he was just kind of hanging around. Waves were dying to turrets. You know, that allowed Ray to have this massive advantage. And Jace in general in North America has not done well. No. Yes, it wins today, but it kind of felt like almost in spite of the pick, not because of the pick. And yeah, previously two and nine in North yeah. America. That brings Jace to his third win here, but that's an abysmal win rate. Yeah. And so I do think it points to something when it comes to North American teams and how they need to operate around this pick. It requires such high execution. Yeah, it really does, because you have to not only win lane, but then you have to be able to actually get something really big done with that. And we saw Lorlo, even from behind, was able to just kind of group up with TL and force fights and, and look aggressively for that. And really, this was TL's game to lose. Uh, Rainover, we got to give him some credit. He was amazing on the Graves. Uh, despite that missed smite, that yeah. would seal the game, but but he really was uh, incredible. Right, we saw in that gold graph there, 9k gold lead at 30 minutes, and we know those double inhibs were down. Yeah. It's very rare to see a team lose with that kind of an advantage and even still the gold was in their favor at the end of the game player of the game going to sneaky this time around on that 80 carry now jensen did have a fantastic score line and was playing mm -hmm. very well but one baron steel with a gin w but two that, that had saved some, the game. yeah it did save the game he had some phenomenal roots and ults as well he did he, i mean the, the the second baron as well he was the one that roots piglet from going into that realm warp getting them that pick which gets them that really good series event so both the barons a lot in credit uh to sneaky we saw a team fight damage across a number of fights he was crushing it the gin in particular was so successful because there's no real front line there's no one with armor no tank to soak up that gin almost with so it's so disruptive it allowed them to take objectives it allowed them to hold on in the 45 squad and i think that sneaky was fantastic in this game and, and because of that four-man squad shining and sneaky in particular it allowed ray to kind of i mean with very few game. tanks in the game we saw how potent any of the armor or lethality building well, champions yeah. are in the jace the gin or the varus we're just chunking people out graves as well anyway when we return liquid take to the stage to see if they can bring cloud nine to a game three don't touch that browser we'll be right back As long as your edge is fine. So. Yeah, that's all that matters. Huh? Yeah. The undefeated Cloud9. Let's go. Double up, 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 Going in. Nice. We, flash. Nice. Going. we can bear it after this. Can we kill? Able to flash out. That leaves Matt to get hit. Daisy can't make it to Matt for three, but it is Sneaky that can. Oh, it's a curtain down on him. Jensen low. Oh, oh, go Flanking in from the side. They're going to have the vision they need. Canceling out Rain over one, two. Gets over oh, the wall with the two. He fights his way back in. Rain over playing out huge on this one. Sneaky tries to get over the wall, oh. but he's taken out as well. The Rain over never gives up, and the team backs him up.